Today's video is a little bit different. Uh, there's a lot of games that have ports, you know, from console to PC, from console to PC, from console to PC, whether you're Call of Duty or you're Tomb Raider, you're going to get a PC port, you know, and there is games that everybody plays ported onto PC. Uh, like I said, from Call of Duty, Tomb Raider, and then everything else like Plants vs. Zombies and all beyond that. So I want to talk about the things that I dislike and what I would avoid when I'm creating my own PC port. So let's jump right into it. The number one thing I hate in a PC port is limiting the FPS. Developers have to understand that PC gamers build their machines to play games at 60 FPS and usually higher. The most recent case of SPS limiting is in Mafia 3. Now this game was for whatever reason limited at 30 FPS. This is crazy. 30 FPS is sometimes less than console quality. Call of Duty runs at 60 FPS on Xbox and PS4. Now, when you're running one of the newest games on the market and you have a 970 system, you should not be getting 30 FPS. Realize that machines are built for these games at high settings at high frame rates. When you don't let the gamer choose the amount of FPS they want, it at, to, they want to run it at, you're splitting the market. One game that comes to mind when I think about limiting FPS on your PC port is Borderlands 2. And it is great. The PC port for that game is astoundingly great. It gives multiple options for limiting and capping FPS. Everything from limiting to 50 to capping at 60, 72, 120, and then to have no limit. Borderlands 2 did it right, and I want to see more games do it like Borderlands 2 did. Give multiple options, and then give an unlimited option if you, the gamer wants that. The next thing I want to talk about is not giving enough settings to the user. Sometimes this is justified, like when you have a 2D game, you don't need three different option menus to get the optimum experience with a side scroller. However, every once in a while a game comes out there as the full 3D experience with camera controls and the whole 9 yards, but they don't have any settings to get the optimal experience on your machine. You could have a high end machine running this game at mediocre settings, or you can have an entry level computer getting 30, basically you don't have enough options, you don't, you're not able to scale the game back and forth to get the way you want it. When you do this, you make your game only applicable to players who can run it the way they want to. It's not good if you want your game to be long lasting, which most games do these days. You can't run your game for only high quality and make it profitable at the same time. It just doesn't work that way. Releasing it on PC after console. So here's a big one that AAA games do all the time. They release it on PC after console, which doesn't sound bad in theory, but PC players have better games to play than re-releases of a game already on console. And I don't have hard numbers for this, but I know enough people to say that a sizable portion of the PC audience has another console of some kind, whether it be a PS4 or an Xbox One. So if they really want a game, they'll play it on console. Now, the most recent thing of this is Tomb Raider. You know, the new Tomb Raider was released on Xbox, then a few months later on PC. Now, that's a little bit of a special case because it was an Xbox exclusive, even to the PS4. But it's still, it doesn't matter. You know, if you want to be profitable on PC, you have to release it at the same time and treat them equally. The other thing it does is it forces people to play the weaker system. If you really want that game, if you really want to play Rise of the Tomb Raider and you have an Xbox One, it forces you to play that and no one likes that. Even for the players who don't have another console. Releasing it on PC after it's released on PS4 or Xbox, it's just not as enticing as it being released first day on all platforms. Not paying attention to play testers is a huge thing. Accusations against one of my favorite developers have said this, and I agree with them. Not listening to your playtesters when porting a AAA game is really hard. It just destroys your level of trust with people who are testing your game. And as a developer, whether you play games or not, you are going to have tunnel vision. You really are, and that's just cannot fly with major game releases of any release for that matter. Batman Arkham Knight did this, and there is a PC port now, and it's pretty good, you know, but the PC port is standard for the worst in history. Like, when you measure bad PC ports, you measure Batman Arkham Knight as a 10. And yes, again, I know it was fixed since then, but when the game comes out, that's what's meaningful. You have to have a good first impression. It has to make an impactful, impactful first impression. So listen to your playtests because that's who the game is going to. The last thing I want to talk about is not giving correct or accurate system requirements. Now, we're going to stop talking about the devs and focus on everyone else for this last one. The last thing that makes a PC port bad is just plain incorrect system requirements. And... You could blame the devs, but it's really not their fault. 
From a marketing standpoint, you want to reach the widest amount of people possible. This is maximized when you have an easy to run game, so naturally everyone involved with the development will try to get the game to run it at a decent frame rate with the lowest specs but also look the nicest and everything like that, you know? It's all about reaching the widest audience. If you have low system re requirements and enough hype around the game, more pre-orders will come in and with that more money and so on. So lower system requirements are good, I'm not saying they're bad. For everyone, they're good. And again, I'm not saying they're bad, but when you stretch the system requirements to make it sound like you can run at a sustainable frame rate on a 2004 Dell laptop and you really can't, that's not only causes negative feeling towards the game, but it also causes negative feeling towards the developers and a lasting stigma for the publisher. You know, if I know that Konami is going to lie about the system requirements, I might not buy their games. And that's Mon that's less money in their pockets, that's a bad feeling for me, and it honestly makes me miss out on a great experience. I wasn't going to blame the devs that last time, but I kind of did towards the end, so I apologize. But with that, my name has been Z-Star. Don't forget to subscribe and rate this video. Then go down to the comments and tell me why you rated it like you did. And I'll see you guys in the next video.